Hey what's up guys. Today I'll show you a mystery thriller film, Mulholland Drive. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a surrealist scene, depicting couples enthusiastically dancing. Then, a blonde woman named Betty, emerges beaming as she's bathed in a blinding spotlight. Afterward, a dark-haired woman is riding in the back of a car in Los Angeles. One man is driving, and another man is in the passenger seat. Suddenly her chauffeur stops the car on an empty road, and she asks him why he stopped. Then two cars filled with raucous women, come barreling down the road. The chauffeur pulls out a gun, and points it at the dark-haired woman, commanding her to get out, right before the two cars hit them. She walks away from the crash dazed, but mostly unscathed, and wanders into the city streets. Later, two detectives arrive at the crash site, and are puzzled by the earrings the woman left behind. Dawn comes, and the woman sneaks into an old woman's apartment. The old woman is going on a trip and has vacated her place. Two men, Herb and Dan, meet at a diner later that morning. Dan tells his companion that he chose that particular diner, because he had a dream about it. In his dream, he was with Herb, and there was a scary homeless man hiding behind the diner. Intrigued, Herb urges his friend to come, and see if his dream will become true. The scary homeless man appears, and Dan collapses in shock. Somewhere, a phone rings, and a man says that the woman is still missing. A second phone rings, and an order is given to an unknown man, who dials another telephone that is placed under a red lamp, with an ashtray filled with cigarette butts beside it. Meanwhile, Betty, a starry-eyed aspiring actress, arrives in Los Angeles to make her dreams come true. At the airport, she says goodbye to an elderly couple she had befriended. She then goes to her aunt's apartment, and meets the chatty elderly landlady. Her aunt is allowing Betty to stay in her apartment, while she goes on her trip. Betty is amazed at how spacious and beautiful the apartment is, and while she's touring it, she discovers the mysterious dark-haired woman, taking a shower in the bathroom. Although she is surprised, Betty remains nice to the woman, and gives her space to get her bearings. A woman steps out of the shower, and sees a poster of actress Rita Hayworth, so she decides to introduce herself as Rita to Betty. Betty assumes that her aunt is also letting Rita stay at her place, and she quickly becomes worried, when Rita tells her that she's been in an accident. Ever since the car crash, Rita has lost her memories, and can't remember who she is or what happened. Meanwhile, the famous Hollywood movie director meets with mobsters, who insist on casting an unknown actress named Camilla in his coming movie. They showed him a picture of her, a blonde-haired beauty. Since these mobsters are financing his film, the director is being pressured to acquiesce to their request. But he refuses, and the mobsters threaten to withdraw their financing. In a moment of anger, the director breaks the mobster's car windshield with a golf club. A Hollywood power might, Mr. Roque, is informed that the director is refusing to obey their wishes. So he orders that the movie's production be shut down to get the director in line. Later that day, a hitman kills his friend and two others in the building, over a black book containing phone numbers. Betty calls her aunt, and mentions that she's met her friend Rita. The aunt is alarmed, because she does not know the woman is staying in her apartment. Betty confronts Rita, who confesses that she gave her a fake name, and she does not know who she is. To solve this mystery, Betty grabs Rita's purse. Inside is $125,000 in cash, and a strange blue key. While driving home, the director gets word that his cast and crew have been fired, and the production of his movie has been shut down. He takes the news in stride, and continues to drive to his house. Unfortunately, Rita still doesn't remember anything, except Mulholland Drive, the street where the car accident happened. Betty tries to convince her to go back to the place, to learn more about her past. The director arrives home, and finds his wife in bed with another man. Without another word, he grabs her jewelry box, and pours pink paint all over the expensive baubles. She gets angry and throws him out of the house. Out of curiosity, Betty calls the police on a payphone, and inquires about whether or not an accident happened in Mulholland Drive last night. The police confirmed it, but would not give any more details. The two women then go inside the same diner, where the scary man appeared. Right then, a waitress wearing a name tag with Diane written on it, triggers Rita's memory. She remembers another woman named Diane, and she and Betty look her up on the phone book. They find only one telephone number under that name, and dial it. However, the voice in the voicemail recording is not Rita's, but it does sound familiar to her. The director goes to a seedy hotel to spend the night in, but the manager informs him that he no longer has any line of credit, and that the people who are looking for him, already know where he is. 
he hurriedly calls his secretary, who confirms that he is destitute now, and that a man called the cowboy, wants to see him. That night, Betty's wacky fellow tenant tells her that someone is in trouble. Betty tries to introduce herself, but the tenant says that's not her name. The landlady appears, and apologizes for the tenant's antics. She also gives Betty the script for an audition tomorrow. On the other hand, the director shows up for his appointment with the cowboy. Sure enough, it's a man with a heavy southern accent, and wearing full cowboy regalia. He mysteriously tells the director to go back to work the next day, and hold auditions to recast the main actress for his movie. When the girl that the mobsters want him to cast appears, he has to pick her. If the director obeys his orders well, he will see the cowboy one more time. If he doesn't, he will see him twice. The cowboy then leaves shortly after. The next day, Betty goes to her audition. She does a scene with an older male actor, and their chemistry is electric. In fact, she is so impressive that the casting agent whisks her away, to be introduced to the director. They enter the room where the director is holding auditions. He and Betty lock eyes from across the room, but the unknown actress Camilla arrives to audition next, and he casts her on the spot. The director and Betty glance at each other again, but Betty hurriedly leaves to meet Rita. The two then go to Diane's address, but meet her neighbor instead, who had switched apartments with Diane. The neighbor points them to the right apartment, and is about to go with them to get some of her things from Diane's apartment, but the neighbor's phone rings. So Betty and Rita go ahead to the apartment, but it seems empty. Betty pries open a back window, and the two sneak inside. To their horror, they discover the dead body of a woman. Distraught at the recent events, Rita tries to cut her hair, but Betty stops her. Instead, she gives her a blonde wig to wear, so she can look like someone else. Later that night, Betty invites Rita to sleep on her bed. The two kiss and begin to let go of their hormones. Two minutes later, they drift off to sleep, but a few hours later, Rita wakes up and starts to utter Spanish phrases. She asks Betty to go with her to a theater, called Club Silencio. Shortly after, they walk inside the dimly lit auditorium, and the MC explains on stage that everything is just an illusion, because all the sounds they will hear throughout the show, were recorded already. He keeps repeating the same Spanish phrase, that Rita had spoken earlier when she woke up. The sounds of thunder boom, and Betty starts to shake. A singer soulfully performs a Spanish song next, and Rita and Betty are both enraptured by the emotion she's evoking. The singer suddenly collapses on stage, but her vocals continue to play. At that time, Betty reaches into her purse and sees a blue box inside. The two women return home, and Rita grabs the blue key they had found inside her own purse. But weirdly enough, Betty suddenly disappears and is nowhere to be found. Rita gets the blue box and uses the blue key to open it. The box then falls to the floor. In the next scene, the cowboy appears and tells a sleeping woman to wake up. Suddenly, it's Betty getting up from her bed in the same apartment that she and Rita entered yesterday. On her coffee table is a blue key. Meanwhile, the same neighbor knocks on her door and calls her Diane, much to her shock. Like the neighbor explained earlier, she and Diane had swapped apartments, and now she's here to pick up the rest of her things. Before leaving, the neighbor mentions that two detectives had come to her apartment, looking for Diane. It turns out that Betty is not really Betty, but is actually Diane, a failed actress dealing with her painful breakup with Camilla, a successful movie star who looks exactly like Rita. Because of that, Diane is depressed, and sees glimpses of the beautiful Camilla. She is still in love with her, but Camilla broke things off to be with the director, who directed one of her movies. Diane is now tortured by jealousy and pain, and spends her days crying and wallowing in misery. After their breakup, Camilla had invited Diane to dinner at the director's mansion, in Mulholland Drive. While it was heart-wrenching for Diane, she couldn't help but go, so she could see Camilla again. Before going to Los Angeles, Diane told the other guests about her life during the dinner. It's revealed that she was from Canada, and when her aunt died and left her some money, she seized the chance to go to the city, and be an actress. That's how she met Camilla, while auditioning for the same part, which Camilla eventually got. As Camilla started to skyrocket to fame, Diane just kept getting small parts in Camilla's films. The blonde-haired woman previously introduced as Camilla, came up to the real Camilla and kissed her. The director and Camilla were about to make an announcement, but just kissed each other. Diane was seething with tears in her eyes, as she watched it all. Not able to deal with the betrayal and heartbreak, Diane hired the hitman to kill Camilla, and paid him $125,000 in cash, when she met him in the same diner from earlier. He then showed her a blue key, saying that when the deed is done, she will find the key in her possession. Dan was also there in the diner, and he stared at Diane. 
Behind the diner, the homeless man from Dan's dream was holding the matching blue box. That same blue key is now on Diane's coffee table, which means that the hitman had killed Camilla according to their deal. The explanation for the curious events is that everything really was an illusion. Diane imagined a world where Camilla survived the attempt on her life and found her way to Diane, or a better version of Diane, who is pure, talented and attractive. She also imagined that the director had lost control of his life and was humiliated, all as revenge for stealing Camilla from Diane. She even created characters like Mr. Roque and the mobsters, to justify to herself that dark forces are controlling Hollywood, hence why Diane never achieved stardom. However, even in her made-up scenario, details like the cash, the blue key, and Diane's name, keep popping up to remind her of the brutal truth, she had killed Camilla she loved. Everything culminated in Club Silencio, where her illusion was revealed. Burdened by guilt and murder, Diane begins to have vivid hallucinations. She sees the old couple from the airport, chasing her around her apartment. Diane couldn't take it anymore, and so she shoots herself with a gun. The movie ends with Diane smiling as a light engulfs her, just like at the beginning of the film. Beside her is Camilla in a blonde wig. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.